Good morning. A spectacular start to the Commonwealth Games on Sunday will shift the focus away from controversies to the actual sports. A few new records will be set for sure. Records are also being broken on the bourses. FI inflows have already surpassed last year's records. The key indices are also within striking distance of record highs. A slew of stocks are hitting new highs too. As of now, it looks like FI inflows will continue unabated as global investors chase higher returns in emerging markets amid uncertainty in the developed world. A few headwinds do exist such as high inflation, swelling current account deficit, hardening interest rates and of course the murky outlook on the global economy. But India's GDP growth will stay robust. Today's start promises to be a solid one. Asian markets are up on the back of Friday's higher finish on Wall Street. Today's start promises to be a solid one. The Asian markets are up on the back of Friday's higher finish on Wall Street. The markets in China will be shut till Thursday and the European indices closed in red on Friday. All eyes will be on the monthly US jobs data and the other important economic reports. Central bank decisions are due in Japan, Australia, the UK and European Union. Earnings season also kicks in this week. The Nifty's critical trading band between 5,990 to 6,080 has got broken on the upside. The earlier resistance is likely to provide support at 6,080 in the near term. On the way up, immediate resistance is seen at around 6,250, above which the Nifty is likely to take shot to its all-time high of 6,357. There is bound to be some sort of pullback in the main indices after such a stunning rise in the past one month or so. But mostly people will look to buy in during these dips. A major crack is unlikely unless we get some really nasty news from the overseas markets or in the upcoming corporate earnings season. The sentiment is quite clearly upbeat as far as India is concerned. Global markets too are not falling apart despite periodic bad news. So ride the current momentum but do not forget to lock in some gains. Also avoid getting trapped into the wrong counters and do proper homework before jumping into any stocks. The other news for the day is the trade deficit in August rose to a 23-month high of 13 billion US dollars on the back of imports that jumped 32.2% annually to 30 billion US dollars approximately as against exports that rose 22.5% in August to 17 billion US dollars approximately annually. India's merchandise exports rose 22.5% in August to 16.64 billion US dollars from 13.58 billion US dollars a year ago. Imports jumped 32.2% annually to 29.67 billion US dollars from 22.44 billion US dollars. India's foreign exchange reserves rose 3.86 billion US dollars to 291.59 billion US dollars in the week ended 24th of September. This is the highest weekly rise since the 31st of July 2009. Passengers and commercial vehicle sales of leading automobile makers rose by 20.6% in September. Funds raised through equity issued in the first nine months of calendar year 2010 were 43% higher than last year. Domestic steel manufacturers have increased prices by up to Rs 1,500 a tonne to cash in on the pickup in demand this festive season and to partly offset the rise in input costs. Legal advisors to the DOT has backed the formula prescribed by the try to allocate 2G spectrum first to those operators which already have initial startup airways. Average AUM of the mutual fund industry saw a nearly 4% increase in September. Ministry of Petroleum has sought a subsidy of 130 billion from the Ministry of Finance for OMCs as compensation for under recoveries on petroleum products for quarter one of financial year 2011. LNT sells 28 million shares of Mahendra Satyam in the open market for 2.9 billion rupees approximately last month. Tata Motors plans to raise 525 million US dollars through a QIP of ordinary and differential voting right shares as part of its 47 billion rupees fundraising plan aimed mainly at reducing debt. REC has got approval from the RBI to raise FII stake limit in the company to 35% from the existing 24%. IOB raises its base rate by 25 basis points to 8.5%. Indian Bank raises its base rate by 50 basis points to 8.5%. 
Nestle India plans to set up a food and beverage manufacturing unit in Himachal Pradesh with an outlay of 2.5 billion rupees. Jubilant Organosis has offered to buy 17.6% stake in US-based Kadista Holdings for rupees 280 million to make it a wholly owned company. Reliance Broadcast Network said that it has raised 3 billion rupees approximately by allocating 33.3 million shares to potential investors and promoters of the company. Moving on to the recommendations, the technical calls are a buy on Jindal Southwest Holding. Traders can buy the stock in the range of Rs. 2170 to Rs. 2210 with a stop loss to be maintained at Rs. 2040 for a target price of Rs. 2550. A buy on Wipro be advised buying the stock above levels of Rs. 463.5 with a stop loss at Rs. 454 for a target price of Rs. 483. And a buy on Oracle Financial Services. We recommend high risk traders to buy the stock above levels of Rs. 2305 with a stop loss to be maintained at Rs. 2280 for a target price of Rs. 2380. Thank you and have a great day ahead.